हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द फोटो डिटेक्टर आफ्टर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू सी द क्वांटम एफिशिएंसी एंड द रिस्पॉन्सिविटी वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन वॉट इज अ फोटो डिटेक्टर वॉट आर इज डिफरेंट टाइप वॉट आर द मटीरियल विच कैन बी यूज एज अ फोटो डिटेक्टर and what are the different characteristics of the best photo detectors that we have if you have still not watched the previous video you can watch them first and then you can come to this video so today we are starting with the working principle of the photo detector now photo detector is a device which is taking the optical signal as the input and it is generating the electrical signal as the output so it is taking the light energy it is generating the current right so how this thing is happening this thing is happening with the help of reversed biased pn junction in the reversed biased pn junction the p side is connected to the negative end of the battery or we can say the n side is connected to the positive terminal of the battery right so whenever we have the pn junction in the pn junction we have some negative immobile ions which are deposited on the p side right here we have the negative immobile ions and here in the n side we have the positive immobile ions right due to the presence of the positive immobile immobile means they are not moving they are immobile ions and they are not moving and they have penetrated over here they have made a layer over here right so now in between this positive and negative immobile ions we have the depletion region right so now here we have this intrinsic electric field which is generated in the depletion region which is directed from the positive immobile ion to the negative immobile ion right so now this is the direction of the intrinsic electric field now what happens we are sending the light as the input so when i am sending the light so i am sending a photon so whenever the photon is having the energy greater than h nu so or the energy is greater than the band gap energy now this is the energy band diagram this is the valence band this is the conduction band and this is the energy gap right so if i am supplying the photon which is having the energy which is greater than the energy gap so hf is the energy of the photon i can represent it as ep so hf is greater than eg so when we have the higher energy photon which is coming and which is colliding the surface near about the depletion region what can happen we are generating a electron hole pair right so this electron will move towards this conduction band here we have generated in the conduction band we have generated an electron in the valence band what was left behind a hole so now here we have generated an electron hole pair and this is used for the further processing now this is used this electron hole pair is used for the generation of the displacement current now with the photon energy we have generated this electron hole pair now this electron hole pair is generated in the depletion region only right in the depletion region you can see this is the energy band diagram in the reversed biased uh, pn junctions depletion region so here we have the electrons in the conduction band and hole in the valence band so hole will move when because here we have the intrinsic electric field as well due to this electric field the holes will move towards the p side and this electron will move towards the n side they are moving towards their majority side so here we will be having the electron moving this side and the hole moving this side so i hope you understood when i have the electron which is moving to this side here we have excess electron here we are supplying it with the positive terminal of the battery so the excess electron is moved attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery right and here we have created an excess hole so from this positive terminal of the battery one electron will be going for the compensation of this generated hole because if the hole would be accumulated here this would be an unstable structure we don't want that so this electron is moving till the positive terminal and from the battery here a negative electron is moving to compensate this 
hole so now as an overall in whole of the outer circuit what is happening a electron is moving from here up till the positive terminal and from the negative ter terminal again a electron is moving to compensate the hole till the p junction right so what is happening a reverse current is flowing right so a reverse current is flowing in the external circuit which is called the displacement current right this reverse current can be flowing in the external circuit due to the high temperature as well so when we have the high temperature the leakage current will be flowing so we in the external circuit we have the leakage current plus the displacement current i hope you understood the working of reversed biased pn junction photo detector right so now here you can see this is the photo generation of the electron hole pair in the intrinsic semiconductor when the photon which is having the energy greater than eg is falling on it so when the photon is falling on it electron moves here and hole is generated over here which is called the photo generation effect now it happens only when h nu is greater than eg and we are breaking a covalent bond in this process now here you can see this is the reversed biased pn junction here the carrier drift is in depletion region you can see these are the carriers carriers are drifting in the depletion region and this is the energy band diagram of the reversed biased pn junction and again we are seeing how the carriers are drifting in this depletion region when the photon hf is incident on it right so electric field due to the immobile ion will sweep carrier to their majority sides when we have this electric field intrinsic electric field is making this uh, this hole to be moving to the p side and this electron to be moving to the n side now this intrinsic electric field is playing a great role in the generation of the displacement current carriers produce a displacement by current in the external circuit so here we have the current in the external circuit which is generated due to the movement of these carriers this electron from here till the positive terminal and from the negative ter terminal again till the p junction we have the movement of the electron so which is creating a current in the external circuit and we are calling this current to be the displacement current and in addition to displacement current in the reverse side we have the leakage current the both of these are the opposite currents which are generated so what we have done with the help of the light energy we have generated the displacement current so light energy is converted into the electrical energy i hope you understood with the functioning in detail if you have any doubt you can watch it again and you can put the doubt in the comment now right so now coming to the quantum efficiency what is quantum efficiency we know the efficiency means the output that we have generated per unit the input right this is how we generate any formula for the efficiency so now here we have the fraction of incident photons absorbed by the photo detector to generate the electron so how many photons are absorbed in this manner to generate the displacement current right this is going to give me the quantum efficiency which are collected at the terminal so now here efficiency is represented by the symbol eta it is equal to the number of electrons collected divided by the number of incident photons so the number of electrons collected it is denoted by e and the number of photons so it can be denoted by let's suppose p so now if i divide both of them by dt so it is going to give me the rate of the generation of the electron and it is going to give me the rate of the collection of the incident photon so i can call it as the rate of the collection of the electron upon the rate of the incident photon and now the quantum efficiency will be always lesser than equal to 1 in the ideal case it will be equal to 1 which never happens so it is lesser than 1 so now coming to the responsivity so the ratio of the output current per unit incident power so the output photo current is denoted by ip and the current is denoted in ampere and the incident power is denoted as p not and it is represented in watts so r can be represented as ip upon p not ampere per watt so now 
we represented efficiency in the terms of rates as well so efficiency was rate of electrons which are collected upon rates of incident photon so now from here if i want to denote re re will be equal to eta into rp right so now rp is equal to incident power divided by the hf the band gap energy so this is how i am going to get the rp right so these are the photons which are going to generate the energy band which is greater than hf so now here let's replace the rp over here so re would be equal to eta into p not upon hf so re will be eta into p not upon hf now here we know re so now re into e will be giving me the current so the number of electrons that are generated and the rate of electrons that are collected so it is going to give me the current which is uh, generated as the photo current so now here you can see we are multiplying re by e so re was eta p not upon hf we are multiplying it with e so eta p not e upon hf responsivity responsivity was ip upon p not we can take this p not here in the denominator so r will be equal to ip upon p not which will be equal to eta e upon hf only eta e is left in the numerator and divided by hf now we know how the frequency is related with the lambda frequency is equal to c upon lambda so let's put the value of frequency over here so it would be equal to r will be equal to any lambda upon hc so from here we got to know that the responsivity is directly proportional to the lambda you can see it here responsivity here it is directly proportional to the lambda so now if i want to make the graph of the lambda versus responsivity it should be a linear graph so it should be the ideal graph this should be the graph of ideal photo detector now this doesn't happen at the lambda see what happens initially the responsivity is increasing but after a certain lambda it started decreasing and it comes to zero at a certain uh, lambda which is called the critical wavelength so at the critical wavelength the responsivity will be zero r is equal to zero at lambda c right so now here you can see we are not generating any current when we have the incident photons so this is my typical photo detector so ideally we should always increase the responsivity if the lambda is increasing but in actual condition the current is limited so why it is happening because what we want from the incident photon we are wanting to generate the electron electronic energy or the electronic current with the help of the generation of the electron hole pair we had generated this electron hole pair by the breaking of the covalent bond but when the lambda becomes too high energy is hc upon lambda so energy becomes less and it is when it is lesser than the eg we are not able to generate this electron hole pair by the breaking of the covalent bond and due to which our current is going down right so as we reach to the lambda c the current will become zero and after lambda c we cannot generate any current by putting any amount of light on the photo detector so now this is the diagram which shows me the responsivity versus lambda for different materials like for the silicon for germanium for indium gallium arsenide so you can see if i see the efficiency here for the germanium the maximum efficiency that is attainable is 50% only but for the silicon and the indium gallium arsenide alloy we are going to get the 90% efficiency so more than 90% efficiency can be achieved with both silicon and indium gallium arsenide photo detector but we are not even getting around the 50% efficiency with the germanium photo detector so now with the help of this this graph i am going to show you the relationship between the responsivity and lambda for 
सिलिकन एंड जर्मेनियम सो यू कैन सी वी हैव द लेसर रिस्पॉन्सिविटी रिस्पॉन्सिविटी इज लेस फॉर लैमडा इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट नाइन एंड वन पॉइंट थ्री फॉर सिलिकन एंड जर्मेनियम सो सिलिकन एंड जर्मेनियम रिस्पॉन्सिविटी यू कैन सी इट इज इंडियम गैलियम आर्सनाइट इज हैविंग हायर रिस्पॉन्सिविटी दैन द सिलिकन एंड जर्मेनियम सो आर इज जीरो पॉइंट फोर फाइव फॉर सिलिकन एंड इट इज जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव फॉर जर्मेनियम इन एम्पेयर पर वॉट एंड वी हैव द हायर रिस्पॉन्सिविटी फॉर द डिफरेंट लैमडा लाइक वन पॉइंट थ्री माइक्रोमीटर वन पॉइंट फाइव फाइव माइक्रोमीटर फॉर इंडियम गैलियम आर्सनाइट and the responsivity is around 0.9 so indium gallium arsenide is going to give me the better responsivity than the silicon and germanium but efficiency for silicon as well as indium gallium arsenide would be better than the germanium so i hope you understood each and everything that i have discussed in this video if you have any doubt regarding any of the concept that i have discussed you can put the doubt in the comment and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible I hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and give me your feedback thank you so much